or how they handle those life altering times, right? Like, like you know, we all got a fucking path that we're walking on, and on that path, you get decisions to make a right, a left, go straight, you can make a U turn. You can do a bunch of shit. There's a bunch of directions that you can go, but it's your choices. Here's the thing: you don't know that you made wrong choices until you made them. Everybody's choice that they make initially is what they think is right. We all think that we know what the fuck we're doing at some point. And it's not until you get comfortable enough with yourself to go on flawed. So when you ask me, what's the thing that changed the most or that I look at and go, that was the one that I go, I survived that, I can survive anything. Each one that you make it through means that you are willing to grow more. I was willing to grow more. Each fuck up, each turmoil, each catastrophic event, me, that I was able to get out of made me look back at that and go, we don't want to do that again. But we're going to make sure that we learn from that and get better from it. See, it's when you keep making the same mistake that you fucked up. Yeah, well, no, no, that's, that's, and that's what actually growing up is. And it's crazy when you look up and you go, yo, I've been making the same mistake for 20 years. Like, I was a kid when I started doing this bullshit, and I'm still doing And then the blessing is when you realize that there are people, unfortunately, they just keep doing that till the end of life. That's same, it. same mistake. It goes forever. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I recommend everyone check out the decision. Listen, I wanted to get up here and just insult Kevin and say, get off your goddamn high horse. Who the fuck do you think you are? But it's yeah. fucking great. I really, really <laughs> enjoy it. Um, so COVID-19, how... Uh, how much do you think this is going to affect Hollywood after this? Your business, and I know it's not the most important thing. We recognize that there's way more important things in the world than Hollywood. You're going to be okay, but yeah. I am curious how you think it's going to affect the business moving forward. Well, I'm glad that you said that. I mean, look, ultimately, you know, our business is affected, but it, the the reality is it'll come back around when it's supposed to. So, you know, you focus on the things that are more important right now, which is the health and safety of those that really move that environment. So at this point, the people that make Hollywood go round, you know, the workers, your transport teams, your, 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 the people that fucking operate and move a set, the, the, the teamsters, you know, that's where that conversation grows. Those are the people that you have to be conscious of. It's not us, it's not the actors and actresses. We're out of work until it goes, but the safety of the people that allow us to do that, that's the priority. Um, you know, I think until the studios get some type of level of insurance um, where they're comfortable, something that they feel like they're protected and, you know, not in the position to get sued if said thing happened, you're, 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 we're all treading on some thin ice. But the reality is you got to figure it out. And what I've understood is that hunters hunt. And when you hunt, eventually you're going to find something to eat. And those that get relaxed, well, you become prey. So in this business, you got to figure out how you're going to fucking eat. So it's about figuring out how to still produce and provide content on that entertainment level in a safe way. How do you do that? Well, that's where you got to get creative. That's where you sit down, you put on that thinking hat, and you say, well, how can I develop and, and produce movies different than what I was thinking of doing before? Rather than my movies having this large cast, what, what can I do that's a little more intimate? What settings can we shoot in that are controlled and safe or where I'm able to flip some shit that people go, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. Well, that's, that's, the my exciting, that's, that's the exciting piece, is that we might see new versions of doing movies that we've never imagined previously. You have to. But also, also the thing that, the thing that we're going to have to do as well is within this, at some point in time, somebody's going to have to take a heroic step of attempting to be comfortable again, right? Like, right now we're on edge, this thing is real, it exists, there's the mask, there's the gloves that people are doing, and rightfully so. But at some point, we're gonna to have to flick a switch to get back to normalcy, to get back to interaction and engagement. That's what our world is based off of. We're people, we're not robots, we're not supposed to operate without interaction. That's not how we, how we flow and go. So, you know, over this time, it's also about figuring out when that switch can that switch can be flipped again and that comfort level of going back to live events, going back to movie theaters, going back to restaurants, going back to gyms. It's going to have to be a progression that, that we as people help with a lot. Uh, talking about interacting with people, I want to ask you, who is, I know this is a hard question, who do you...
Steve is truly the funniest person you've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. And who do you believe is truly the funniest person you have not gotten to work with? Funniest person I've ever worked with is Will Ferrell. On, Will on, Ferrell. Get, on Get Hard. Will Ferrell. There, there's, not, there's not a funnier person on the planet of, of nonstop characters, nonstop bits, nonstop jokes. He's, Will Ferrell is just, he's a, he is it. He is everything that you think he would be plus more. And when it comes to shooting a scene, does not break. He's not laughing. He's not fucking up takes. He's going to give it to you every single time. Uh, that's by far the, the, the funniest. So the, you say not only funniest, but also that he's ill as in terms of professionalism, does both perfect. He's, he's there, there's nothing bad that you can attach to Will Ferrell in conversation or anything else. Do you I have times with your, because Kevin, you can go off, like I've, I, I've interviewed you before and for 15 minutes, the whole interview is only a bit. You never yeah. leave the bit. Yeah. Are there times when Will wears you out and you're like, all right, I, this is, a, this is, you're never, it's, nev it's never enough. It's, it's never it's enough. It's not good. It's never, Will, we, when we were doing Get Hard, Will, had, he had a bit that he was doing about the prop guy. He had a bit that he was doing about the prop guy, and this bit about the prop guy was, you know, we couldn't get the smoke to, to smoke in one take. And Will's bit was like, look, man, the prop guy's been here all day, and he's been waiting for this moment. He's checked the wires. He's made sure it's work. <laughs> and then as soon as they say action, he, he's pressing it, and there's no smoke. And Will kept doing this thing where he was acting as a prop guy. <laughs> he was like, Carl, did you check the courts? Did you I told you to check the courts before we start. You did check the courts. Guys, give me give me two minutes. Let me run back to the truck. I just want to make sure everything's fucked up. And he's he acts like he comes back. He's like, fucking everything's fucked up. I got no idea why this uh guys, can I get can I get two? Everybody clear. He stayed in this bit as the prop guy that just couldn't get it to work. And when I tell you for days he showed up. And he acted as if the prop guy wanted to talk to everybody before the day. I mean, he's just, he's a different animal. Uh, funny guy, I'm going to tell you, funny guy that I haven't worked with. All right. Uh, on screen, Dave Chappelle. Mm. Me and Dave have never done anything on screen. Me and Dave, I mean, that's my guy. One of my closest friends in this fucking business. We've yet to do anything on screen. And, you know, I can't, I can't go further in my career or get to that space of ending without figuring that out like that's a true have you tried have you pushed i'm him figuring on it? it out now i'm figuring it out now like what, I what gotta, is, is he open to it yeah it's just we gotta the thing is we wanted to be right what is the thing and how do we make it right my dream is creating that harlem nights feel of of film for today like harlem nights had all these great fucking actors that were comedic actors comedians that all were in this this ip and it's so iconic but we don't have that with our generation we don't have that material so this is where i put that producer hat on it's a priority it's not a want it's a priority it's going to happen i'm so cracking the code so, then, so okay so so dave Chappelle, kevin hart obviously who are the other people that pop in your mind if it was if it was harlem nights 2020 um my version of something in that space like you know i'm i'm basically trying to develop this uptown saturday night now so i would say dave chris said myself um you know despite despite all of the dumb shit that that has happened with your cat and your mics there's still people that that have moved the needle i'm not mm -hmm. the grudge dude so if there's a way to get past the dumb shit and for them to see the greater good. With Cat and Mike, that, you know, that would be. I mean, just being in the film. I just the people that have touched comedy that that represent our culture. Martin, Tucker. You know, like how do you have that poster? That poster to me would 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 mean everything. You know, that's a that's a that's a great poster. And then you know you pepper in your huge stars to come in, embrace you, and bless you with with cameos like now now you're talking about a game-changing experience so i've been redeveloping uptown for about a year and a half now we're finally close the script is finally like 
in a good place. Uh, me and the studio are in a good place of conversation, final tweaks, and now we're having these discussions. But it's to do that. There, if it can't be that, then I won't do it. It has to be I, that. I love that you mentioned the poster because that speaks to, to you as a kid. Mm -hmm. That those, those things that you see that are iconic. Yeah, the movie is the movie, but seeing those faces on that poster that. is meaningful. You need that. Yeah. You need that. And and look, when you when you go and you just start to talk about what your impact was, what you did, uh, later on in life, man, you just want stories to float around with you and your name and your craft. And when it comes to the craft of comedy, when it comes to the 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 effort of of putting as much as I possibly can into me and my enterprise, this is what I'm talking about in this goddamn audio book, man. It's it's about understanding you and being the best version of you. When it's all said and done, you don't have to like me. You don't have to be a fan, but you're going to respect this body of work. Mm. That's, well. that's, when it's all said and done, that's what I want. I want the body of work to speak for itself. So, so that's the goal. That's priority. That's my drive. It's, it's, putting something together for me, strictly for me. That's it.